I was there before, like before Darren was drafted, like, and we were, we weren't very good at the time. Right. Cause they had just lost Carl and they had, you know, to the Lakers and, and uh, stock had retired and we were a young team. And, you know, Jerry was, Jerry would threaten to fight you, man. Like Jerry would, him and Ostertag would, would man. like square up in the locker room. Like, that's Wait, like seriously? Greg threw an so, ice bag across the room. Them two were squared up. We were like, oh shit. See, that's why, that's the whole thing to me is like, everybody says like, I made Jerry retire. I'm like, man, what I, what, the argument we had was so minimal Compared to the shit I had seen before, Jer- Jerry Sloan was trying to run the fade in the, in the right. locker room. Man, like, Jerry was trying to. I mean, Jerry tried to fight Jerry Stackhouse. <laughs> what? <laughs> I would have paid to see that one though. Wait, that wait, wait. Been, like ser- Dar- I know, seriously? I we would have to, to step. We, I mean, he challenged him on the court. I mean, I didn't heard. I didn't heard Coach wait. Sloan <laughs> say a lot of stuff to a lot of refs, <laughs> other oh, yeah. players. My man tried players. to fight Jerry Stackhouse, bro. That's that's tough. Man, Jerry, Coach, Sloan, Coach Sloan was a G, man. I, that's the one thing. Uh, he, 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 say it again. He was a G. G. He was he a G. Was. This, hey, this this cat said one day in a in a in a in a film session. But first of all, he had hands like like they were yeah. like meat hooks, bro. They were huge and big and like. So he said, "What he said? I want to remember." He said, "You know, I'd fight most of you in here, like, and I'd win. And for those of you that I don't think I win, I got an ice pick in the car." And we were like, oh, shit. <laughs> and y'all believed him, too. Y'all, y'all believed that, too. But, but you know what? At the end of the day, like, it so, was like there was real ma- – there was love for Jerry, though. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, you knew that's who he was. He didn't – it wasn't like he didn't like you. It was – his teams wore that on their sleeves when yeah. they played. Like, that, you know, tough you came teams. with that tough lunch pail mentality. This is how mm. we're going to do it. You know, we're going to run this four up, four down. You know what's coming, and we're and we're still cramming it down your throat with it. Like, that's the way they play. It's the way we play. Mm. Yeah. So, towards the – so, Raja tells me towards the, the his, like, last night – of um with Jerry right of where like you you guys get it you guys get into it and then um he re- he just retires the next day or resigns the next day he told his side of the story how was that for you D Will when he just <laughs> can you can you tell the story from your vantage point of okay we have this game and then I think Raj just says you guys go in for a, a team thing and it's like one, two, it's usually like one, two, three team, and then it was like one, two, three, something else. What was that for on what was what was that <laughs> what story say? for your What did he point? say when he said one, <laughs> two, three? Hey, I mean, what did he say when he said one, two, three that night? <laughs> was it was it was it one, two, three, good luck? It was good luck. That and we were all <laughs> like, <luck>. what? <laughs> wait, so what happened? Wait, what happened? So so what happened is like we have these, we have we have these plays that are always run on specific sides of the court. Right. Mm -hmm. And so Al Jefferson, he like literally likes one block better than the other. Like it's not even like a secret. And so I switched one play because I saw something and I was like, let's just try it. I was like, let's run it the other way. Literally the same play on the the opposite side of the the floor. I just switched it to the opposite side of the floor. Mm -hmm. And so we ran the play and got a bucket. Got a bucket. Got a, yeah, I think we scored, and I didn't think nothing of it. And then we come in at halftime, and first thing out of Coach Sloan's mouth is like, "You want to coach this team?" And I'm like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, <laughs> like he's like, so he just kind of he was upset about that, and I'm like, "Nah, man." I was like, "You got it." I was like, "You got the juice." I was like, "I was like, you got it." I was like, "I'm just," and so he just kept on, and I'm like, I, "Like, I, I didn't know what to say." I was just like, "I." I was like, I fucked up. <laughs> I was, my bad. And so he was like, our owner was there. He's like, Greg, can I talk to you? Um, and I was like, I want to be there. So I walked, I walked with him and he was like, basically like, I'm done. And I was like, no, he, no, no. I was like, just trade me. I was like, just trade me. Let, like that didn't have to happen. And we go back out on the court, lose the game to the bulls, come back in. And he says the one, two, three, good luck. And so, so you like, knew that you knew it was done. You knew it was like well, you knew well, it was over. You, I mean, I don't. I didn't know. I didn't know he was gonna, what it was going to happen in the morning. Mm-hmm. So there's a wall um, between our locker room and the training room where you guys went to have that talk, right? Like you guys mm-hmm. like went around the corner. So like you can't. It's to some degree inaudible, but you can hear the voices raising. So you know there's whatever. Like 
But none of us knew. We couldn't have known at that time. We went out and played the whole second half. D, I don't know if you remember this, but like the second half, you guys didn't really talk. So like you would tell me, hey, go tell Jerry like, this and I will go over and then Jerry would be tell D Will we're gonna run this and I'd be like oh shit all right and I think so we did that like, no one knew Logan so at the end of the game when he said good luck we all literally looked at each other like what the did, fuck? did did he just say good luck and I still didn't know I got to shoot around not shoot around we had treatment the next morning and I got to treatment like probably 20 30 minutes like late like and he had already retired like he had already had a press conference and just kind of shut it down that's wild, man. How do you play after that? What do you do? Like, how does that, how, what is a player's mindset after some shit happens like that? I mean, it was tough for me because, you know, of course it was all, you know, I got blamed for everything. So, you know, yeah. here, here goes the most beloved coach that ever coached Utah and I'm, you know, I'm the blame. So it was tough. You know, it was definitely tough. And then I think what it was, what was it like four or five games before all-star break? Yeah. So, yep. I mean, I only, I only had five more games in, in Utah, then I was, and I was gone. You, you said, "No, nah, you could trade me." They was like, "No, nah, he gonna resign, and then we gonna trade you too." <laughs> that's, what, <laughs> well, that's, that's exactly what that's happened. What, you got <laughs> traded, right? Like we we hear about it. Um, same time, like we're looking at the ticker, like oh, um, and then obviously you got to pack and, and dip, right? So I'm sitting in like the hot tub, you know those old bullet type hot tubs, like the low mm -hmm. ones on the floor. Um, mm -hmm. so I got my feet in. I'm trying to warm them up before a game, and Kate, Kate, Kevin O'Connor comes through, and you know, he says something and he says, uh, he looked at me, you know, in only the way he could. And he goes, sometimes you get what you deserve. And I was like, oh, oh. like, and it was in reference to the trade dog. And I was like, mm -hmm. you know, that will, I mean, I don't really have any beef with, with, with Kevin. Like I certainly have no beef with Utah, but that one was eye opening to me, almost as eye opening as, as I tell the story about Robert Sarver telling me why he wouldn't give me an extension, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it all speaks to bigger picture. I'm on a different subject now of kind of what, what Draymond talks about. Like it, there are times in this where <laughs> you are moved like a piece on a chessboard, like you are moved yeah. and it's, you're not necessarily seen as human in the equation. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Yeah, and I kind of, I think I come to find out how everything went down is kind of like so you know Melo was trying to get up out of Denver, right? Okay, yep. And so it was like it was like New York was offering the Knicks were offering a package and the Nets were offering a package, and so like I had already kind of hinted to Greg that I was going to like leave after my contract was up, right? And so. Oh, you knew already. I, you knew you was gone. You knew you was going to do it. No, I mean, I like kind of. Okay. Kind of. It was just, it was just, you know. Time had like, come. Yeah. Like, because I had been around all the best players in the world. I played, I played in two Olympics. I played in the Olympics, right? And I was trying to recruit everybody. You know, I'm talking to everybody. Nobody's coming to Utah. And I know, like, I'm, 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 a, I'm a really good player at the time. But I know I'm a, number one. I'm a point guard. You don't win championships with just a point guard, mm -hmm. right? You need pieces. You know, we need other pieces. And like all I saw, the writing on the wall was nobody is going to come to Utah. Not one person I've ever talked to was interested in coming <laughs> to Utah. It just was a reality, and so I felt like I had to go somewhere else at the time because that's how the NBA was. It's not like it is now. And so um, I kind of you know hinted at that and. Um, Come to find out, I guess, basically, when Melo went to the Knicks, they just offered me for that same package to whoever wasn't going to mm. wasn't going to get Melo. So if he went to Brooklyn, it was going to be the Knicks. You know, it was kind of like kind of like that. I think is how it kind of went down.